Uh, we are going next uh, to Kathy Slayton in Florida. Kathy. All right. Uh, I'm so excited. Thank you. Okay. So um, did I hear now? So when you were just talking about where you live, do you live on Mallorca or do you live on the? Yeah. So I, li I live, good question. Uh, I live in the Spanish state of Catalonia. So I'm on the Spanish mainland. Oh, Catalonia okay. is, is, is the most Northeastern state. If you've ever been to Barcelona, Barcelona is the capital of, of Catalonia, but I live about two and a half hours north of Barcelona, uh, right near the Principality of Andorra. And, and by the way, I know we have a lot of sports fans, international sports fans here. Where I live in the town of Lasso, which is a town of 12,000 people, we all know what football is over here. It's the Barcelona FC, the soccer team. But where we are is a big endurance sports uh, area. Uh, you know, just today I was I was driving home from Maria's house. I saw Nairo Quintana, the uh, Tour de France podium finisher, training out on the road, getting ready for the next Tour de France. We have 45 professional cyclists, including the uh, reigning world champion, Philippe, that lives in Andorra, just five miles to the north of La Seo. We have uh, Killian Jornet, who uh, Joe Malloy knows well, arguably the greatest endurance athlete in the world. Uh, he was raised right around here in La Seo, went to school in La Seo. He's a mountain trail runner. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, I, I live in the Pyrenees in the Spanish state of, of, of Catalonia. Okay, I feel terrible because that actually wasn't my <laughs> that wasn't my. No, role. no, no, it's great. It's great. I, I just I, I love Sorry. talking about it. I know. I, I'm, I I'm personally for... could listen to Joe just announce these crazy names that I, I couldn't get one of them out of my mouth. And Joe just says them so beautifully. It's uh it, it, it's it's pretty cool. All so, right, Kat. Um, all right. So uh, all right, I'll make that okay. So when did you know that this sport was gonna be an Olympic sport for you? Because a lot of I mean, obviously you know, if you pick up I a casual sport, you may not yeah. be an Olympian in that, you know, like I like speed walking, but I'm not going to win a medal for that. So when was it for you? What, what was the catapult to be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to the Olympics and I'm going to, you know, like, what was it like, what time period, or can you remember how old you were? Like, oh yeah, sure. So Kathy, I love the question. And, and it, like, I just feel like I've gotten so many lucky breaks, you know, in, in my life. And one of them sort of was the timing of, of the whole Olympic thing. So I, when I started going to summer camp, a day camp in the Washington DC area where I grew up. So the Washington DC area is amazing for canoeing because there's an eight mile stretch of incredible whitewater river rapids between Great Falls and Little Falls, uh, which is Little Falls is just a few miles above Georgetown. But we're talking world class, world class, big, punchy, strong whitewater in the middle of a major metro metropolitan city. And so I learned to paddle there. But, you know, but I at the summer camp, you know, I was eight. I went there again when I was nine. I didn't really care for kayaking. And then when I was 10, I was one of the first two in the group to get the Eskimo world where you turn over and then you bring the boat back up right again. And, you know, listen, there's something about when you're 10 years old and you, the first time you've been the first at anything in something, you're like, I like this. Like it's, and again, it's like, does come back to that ego thing. It's like an identity thing. And it's like, I like this, but I, it wasn't just that I was the first to learn to roll. Like I was so lucky. I mean, this summer camp was founded by the McEwen family and Jamie McEwen, who is one of the three athletes that I wrote the book in memory of, he passed away from cancer a few years ago. Jamie won a medal for the United States, the first ever Olympic medal for the United States in whitewater canoeing at the 1972 Olympics. And yeah, I was learning to paddle at the camp just six years later after that. And, you know, did, you know there were these legends of the sport that came from this camp. So you sort of knew where to go and, and how to get involved. And there was a great training group, not a great, arguably the best training group of all time that was training on the Potomac River. And these guys, these it was like being 12 years old and going to play basketball with I don't even know who the best basketball players are, are today. I, I kind of haven't lived in the U.S. long enough to know. I, I, but it would be like going to play with like MJ, LeBron, and, and Shaq and being coached by Phil Jackson. 
And so, yeah, that was me in canoeing. I was really, really lucky that way. The last thing I want to tell you that was so cool about my journey is that in when I really started taking to the sport in the early 1980s, our sport was actually not on the Olympic program. After the 1972 Olympics, they decided that these whitewater channels cost too much money and it was not prohibit, you know, cost prohibitive. And there was just world championships. Like that was what you aim for. There was no Olympic fame or glory and there was no glory or fortune in being a whitewater canoeist anyway. It just didn't exist. You did it because you love doing it. You, I did it because I love the people that I paddled with. That's what kept me going. Um, a lot of people do love the feeling of canoeing and kayaking. I do. I love the people who I paddle with even more. That's what kept me coming back. And so it happened when the sport was added to the Olympic program again for the 92 games. That was uh, really early 1989. At that point, my canoe partner and I were doing pretty good. You know, we were starting our third year of paddling together. We had already won a medal in a World Cup race. And so, and we were getting ready to compete in the world championships, which for the first time ever, were going to be held in the United States. We came in fifth in those world championships. A week later, we won our first ever world cup race. And, you know, here we were in this Olympic sport and we were, you know, we ended up finishing third overall in the world cup. So we knew we were pretty good. We're like, let's keep this up for another three years and see what we can do. So it wasn't like I fell asleep as a kid every day, dreaming of the Olympics. Like I just liked what I was doing. And the best part of it, the proof of that is, is I'm 52 years old and Maria and I still paddle a doubles canoe together. Maria is my girlfriend. We just love paddling together. We go out on river. We, you know, we paddle in the gates. We just like, it's just, it's just an activity we enjoy doing together, being in the boat together. And I've always said like, this is a sport you can do for life. And uh, sometimes we go out to the sea and we paddle sea kayaks and that's wonderful as well. And that's the coolest part of all this. Like I was never thinking like, oh, I'm going to be the best or I'm going. By the time I had an Olympic dream, like we were already pretty good at the sport. Amazing. Thanks. Amazing. And yeah. I, I love how you talked about the joy that you got out of it. Because uh, it did make me think about Joe Hotlap Malloy. Uh, <laughs> and the first time I met him with this gigantic smile on his face as he was running up a mountain that we were trudging up um and you know just pure joy uh just the joy of being outside and, and moving 